paint drip splatters and runs, revealing a series of images. A woman playing violin, then in a bright pink costume, then in a blind skier penny atop a mountain. The drip finally lands, revealing text in print and braille. Unsightly Opinions. Hi, welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name's Tamara. Today, we are going to be reviewing every white cane I was able to get my hands on. We have over 10 to try out. We are going to be looking at their weight, their cost, their feel, their potential use. I'm going to be trialing them with two different tips each. We're going to be looking at constant contact versus two point touch, obstacle avoidance, and how that tactile feel translates through the cane. We're also going to be looking at a few different color options that Ambutech offers. So if you've been wondering what those look like in the real world, I've got almost all of them here so you can see them in action. I expect a few surprises today as we try out and see which cane is my favorite. There are three main types of cane tips that are options for most canes. The first is a slip-on tip, which just pops right on the end of your cane. The second is a screw-on tip, which does what it says. And the third is a hook-on tip, which attaches to the elastic on the inside of your cane. In the marshmallow variety, the screw-on and hook-style tips weigh about the same at 41 grams. But the slip-on tip is a little bit lighter, weighing in at about 36 grams. However, when you look at the metal glide tip, it's the exact opposite. The slip-on tip is the heaviest, 20 grams, while the screw-on and hook-on style are 15 grams, respectively. So keep that in mind if weight is a significant factor when you're ordering your cane. So now let's dive in and talk about our different types of canes. Let's start with the rigid cane. This one is solid with no breaks from tip to handle. Has an elastic at the top, so if you want to hang it, you still can. And it also has an elastic running through the cane, so if you want to have a hook style tip, that is available for you. It is the same diameter as a standard graphite cane, just minus the sections. It has handle options in wood, cork, or the standard rubber grip. This one is the graphite model. You can get it in heights anywhere from 12 to 72 inches tall in two inch increments. It has the option for either slip on or hook on tips. It weighs 195 grams without the tip. It is available through Ambutech in all of its different color options. You can also get the highlight, which is the handle color. This one is blue and the shaft is also blue, but they are different blues. The handle is a much brighter blue than the more vibrant royal blue of the shaft. This is good for heavy duty use. So if you're a light user, it would also work for you. And this cane will cost you $35 and 46 cents Canadian. So what did I think about this cane? Moving with this cane, I didn't notice a significant difference between my daily driver, which is a graphite, and this cane. It felt about the same. I didn't feel like I was getting any more or less information from what was on the ground in front of me. However, when I started encountering obstacles, it was a different story. I definitely did get more sensation through the cane when I ran into things. When I switched to the metal glide tip in constant contact, there was a lot of information being translated through the cane. In two-point touch, I definitely got more information from the ground translating through the cane than I do with my typical cane. So I like the way it interacts. It feels solid, sturdy. It doesn't feel like it bends. It's generally a good cane. The only drawback to this one in particular is you can't make it more compact than it is. This is what you have to deal with. So if you're going on a plane, it has to get stored in a special locker. You can't keep it with you. And it might be a little more challenging challenging if you're at a restaurant to try and find a space where it's going to fit comfortably. Next, let's look at the fiberglass cane. It is only available in the standard rubber handle, but it is also available in telescoping, rigid, and folding varieties. I picked up the folding variety. You can get it in heights from 12 inches to 72 inches in two inch increments. You can use slip on or hook on cane tips with this cane. It's a little bit heavier at 303 grams. It is available in all of Ambutex colors. This one, I got in the bright red with a black handle and standard tip. It is rated for its durability, so any heavy duty users, this one's for you. But if you are also a light user, it's going to suit your needs as well. This one came in at $33.46 Canadian. And when I look at this cane, the first thing that strikes me is the diameter. It is significantly thicker than any of my other canes, which means even when folded, it takes up more surface area. The connections have a very long metal piece that slides into the housing of the piece above it. But other than that, it's very standard. It has an elastic running through it and it has the elastic at the top that you can use to fold up and hold your cane closed. This one was the biggest surprise to me. I didn't think I was going to like this at all, 
but from start to finish, this one had the best tactile feedback of any cane. And I went back and forth between the Rigid and this one. This one gives you a lot more information about what's on the ground around you. Whether you're using constant contact with a roller marshmallow, two-point touch with a rolling marshmallow, or whether you're using the metal glide tip, it really doesn't matter. It translates all of the information really, really well. Same thing when you run into obstacles, it feels very solid, it doesn't feel like it's going to bend, and you get good information about what you've just contacted. Next, let's Let's talk about the graphite cane. This is my daily driver for a lot of different reasons. I have it in purple, black, and standard white and red. This cane is available in the standard rubber, wood, or cork handles, depending on your preference. This folding model is also available as a rigid or two-section telescoping cane. This cane is available from 12 inches to 72 inches in two-inch increments. You can use it with either slip-on or hook-on tips. It weighs 223 grams. It is available in all of Ambutex colors, and it is rated from light to heavy duty use. One of its selling factors is that it's both lighter and more durable than an aluminum cane. This cane will cost you $44.56 Canadian. When I went out to use this cane, it just felt like my everyday. It's a good weight. It feels solid in your hand. It doesn't feel like it bends very much. It gives decent translation, not the best, not the worst, but it gives the most versatility in terms of its weight to tactile feedback ratio. If you're a heavy duty user who wants the lightest option that's going to give you decent feedback, this is the cane for you. And it didn't matter whether I was using the rolling marshmallow tip or whether I was using the metal glide tip in constant contact or two point touch, it very much felt consistent to me. However, when you do contact objects or when you are moving, it does give you less information than the fiberglass cane. And next, we're gonna talk about the old style aluminum cane. This one is my only cane that's in four sections. I ordered it like this by mistake, but I wanted to show you this to compare it to what Ambutech now offers, which is a lot more sleek. The old style aluminum cane has a lot longer metal joining sections to hold the pieces together. But other than that, it's fairly standard. It has the rubber golf grip, it has the elastic to help hold it together when it's shut, and it weighs about 293 grams. From what I can recall, there were no color options available for this cane, and it was the standard for a very long time because it was relatively durable. From what I can recall, it was in the 28 to 29 dollar range to buy this cane, but I don't have the exact price because this is not on offer anymore. Whenever I use aluminum canes, the first thing I notice when I'm traveling is that it feels heavy. It feels heavy and it doesn't feel like I'm getting as much information from the ground I'm contacting, whether it's in constant contact or two-point touch when I'm moving. I feel tired a lot quicker using this cane than some of the other ones just because of that added weight. When you contact objects, it definitely has a little bit more of a bend to it. And every aluminum cane that I've had in the past has ended up bent over time like a banana because of constantly contacting objects and the metal fatiguing over time. So it's not my favorite cane, but it is one of the least expensive canes. So if that's what you need, it's an option. The newer aluminum cane is a lot more sleek. It's definitely closer to the style of the graphic cane with smaller joining sections and this one I have found after repeated use gets stuck a lot less than the old style aluminum. So I definitely appreciate it. It feels like an upgrade from the old style. You can get this cane in the standard rubber grip, cork, or wooden handles. This aluminum cane is also available as a rigid cane with no folding sections. You can get it from 12 to 72 inches in two inch increments. This cane is available in slip on or hook on style tips. I have the slip on style here. It is available in all of Ambutex color options. This one is the green variety with the highlight green handle. The handle is very vibrant like a highlighter green. It's almost neon and the shaft is a much more rich vibrant bright green. This cane weighs in at 310 grams and is the heaviest cane on this list. It is rated for all-purpose use from light to heavy duty and is going to cost you $29.73 Canadian. This was not my favorite cane although I do appreciate
appreciate the fact that this newer model is definitely a lot more sleek than the old style aluminum and it does feel more sturdy, the weight does get to you. It is more exhausting to use for sure. The translation is okay, but I find this one is not nearly as good as the other canes in terms of translating what's on the ground. And that doesn't matter whether you're using a metal glide tip or a marshmallow tip in constant contact or two point touch. Definitely feels a lot more flexible when you contact objects. There is a definite bend to the cane if you run into something hard. For those reasons, this is definitely not one that I would pick as my daily driver, but maybe you'd like this more than I would because you don't want as much vibration in your hand from the ground. I like that. Next, let's talk about the telescoping cane. It is very different from all of the other canes on this list. It has an elastic at the top, so if you want to hang it, you can. The handle is smooth with a rough to shiny diamond pattern moving up the cane handle. There is a twist grip that allows the components to telescope. Everything friction locks together. So there are no joints. To lock the cane closed, there is a rubber piece that fits into the handle that prevents the cane from coming apart once it's been compressed. And you can probably hear when it's closed, the pieces rattle around inside. So it's definitely not the quietest cane if you've got it in your backpack. This one does not have any color options and does not have any other options in terms of handle. It is only available as a screw on cane tip. It's only available in 44, 52 and 60 inches. However, if you do need something shorter than that, you can lock it off at a shorter height. Once it's collapsed, it's 12 inches long. So it is definitely the slimmest cane once it's put away. It is made of fiberglass and that is the only option and it is relatively light at 159 grams. This cane is only rated for light duty use and I would put a big asterisk on even that and it's going to cost you $48.07 Canadian. This was my least favorite cane by far. It was frustrating. The screw part that's supposed to lock the joints together got stuck on me multiple times and we actually ended up needing to get a wrench to get it open again. The friction fit joints did not stay locked. It was very frustrating to use. Even when I contacted lightly and I had it tightened down as hard as I could to friction fit the joints, it was still coming apart. It just fell apart. It really wasn't good for anything except identification. If you're running it on the ground, there's a good chance it's going to collapse on you just by putting it on the ground. And it had the worst feedback in terms of what was translating from the ground to my hand. It almost felt like I wasn't using a cane at all. I can't emphasize how much I dislike this cane enough. I would not recommend this to anyone if you are doing any kind of mobility with it. I did get a little bit more feedback through the Metal Glide than the Roller Marshmallow, but even so, it was not something I enjoyed or will likely ever use again. Next is the newest addition to the Ambutech lineup, and that is the No Jab Cane. This is one I have been very excited to try for a long time. I was actually contacted by the gentleman who created the No Jab who wanted to know if I'd tried it yet and was curious to know if it was something I'd be interested in doing for the channel. It's not sponsored, but I do want to let you know for full transparency. It has a sheepskin leather grip. That is the only option available to this cane. It feels very high quality. It's got stitching up the back, much like you'd see on a baseball glove. The leather itself has holes, also like a baseball glove, to let your hand breathe. It is only available in folding options. I have the graphite version here. It has a more limited size range from 50 inches to 60 inches in two inch increments. It comes with the hook on marshmallow style tip, but you can change that out for any hook on tip you like. It weighs 275 grams. It does not have any color options. It's just the standard red and white. It is rated for heavy duty use and it is the most expensive cane on this list by far coming in at $97.49. What is most unique about this cane is its construction. It's designed to give you a few inches of give before you jab yourself. The top section has the handle. The second section is entirely smooth. There is no reflective tape here, which allows the top section, which has a spring, to compact on the second section of the cane without wearing out the reflective tape. I was concerned when I saw this cane that 
I wouldn't get good tactile feedback. And while it's not as crisp as a fiberglass cane, it wasn't as dull as an aluminum cane. Jabbing yourself in the gut is a real problem a lot of cane users face. You're supposed to hold it at belly button level. I know some of us hold it out to the side. I know I do, so I don't jab myself because it hurts. As somebody with mobility issues, the hard stops of a cane can really damage my joints. This is a lot more gentle on your joints and gives you a little more room to stop. When I ran into things, I still got decent tactile feedback, but the spring gave me that split second to stop myself, which felt really nice. I know this cane is probably not for everybody. If you are really into solid tactile feedback, this is not going to be the cane for you. But if you hate jabbing yourself, it's probably something worth looking into. It's something that I have been using more as a daily driver recently. And while it is a little heavier, I think the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. I do want to do a more in-depth review and put this cane through its paces, but I'm going to wait till spring to do that. So if you're interested in that video, let me know and I'll definitely go into more detail on this cane. Next we have the slimline cane. I got this one in pink. I have two of them right here because the first one I ordered had tape that was peeling up. I contacted Ambutech. Their customer service was fantastic. They shipped me a new one in less than two weeks and let me keep the one that was not quite right. So I'm going to give this away or donate it. If you would like this 54 inch pink slimline cane, I will ship you the nice one. Let me know in the comments down below and I will pick somebody to give it away to. This cane has one style of grip, it's a squishy foam and very different from any of the other canes. It also is available in a rigid form that is not folding. It is rated for light to moderate use. The shaft is very narrow, about half of what the other shafts are at 9.5 millimeters. You can only use a threaded tip with this cane. It is the lightest cane on this list at 114 grams. You can order it in all of Ambutex color options. This cane comes from 12 inches to 64 inches in two inch increments. And it's going to cost you $40.91 Canadian. The joining sections are quite long to help give the cane some rigidity. It has an elastic running through it like standard canes, but it's only a single elastic instead of a double elastic, likely to save on the weight as well as make this cane as narrow as possible on the inside. I do wanna mention that the joiners do snap together really hard. So I did pinch my finger once, which is not something I typically do on canes. So watch yourself. And other than its slim stature, it is very similar to other styles of canes. This cane is really good at being compact. It is not really good being a versatile mobility cane. I think it works really well for travel. It works really well if you're not doing a lot of heavy duty mobility, but the translation felt very sloppy and the cane itself felt very bendy. If you are going to use this cane, it does require a light tip. I would not use this with a roller marshmallow. I would not use this with a bowling ball. I would not use this with any of the jumbo rollers. It needs a light tip. It worked okay with the metal glide, but it was definitely really bending and it did feel like it was kind of doing a bit of a wave when I was using the roller marshmallow. I am a little concerned with this cane that over time it would bend significantly or break because of how narrow it is if you run into obstacles hard. So if you're using it for light use, if you just wanna shove a cane in your purse as a backup, if you're a guide dog user, great. I think it's really fun, it's compact, it works well, but if you're using it for mobility reasons, I would probably go for something else. And finally, we have the aluminum cane from Amazon. This cane comes in standard white and red, but you have the option for a blue, pink, or black rubber grip handle. There are significant differences between this cane and the Ambutech canes that I've tried on this list. This cane feels flimsy and cheap. This cane only comes in the folding variety. You can't get it in any other styles. And the listing I was looking at only has this cane available from 51 to 61 inches tall in four inch increments. So you have a lot fewer options than going with Ambutech. It is supposedly made out of aluminum. It has the hook style tip and does come with a rolling marshmallow. I used this cane back in the day for only about four months 
and I wore completely through it because the Roller Marshmallow was a much lower quality than ones I had used previously. It weighs 205 grams, so significantly lighter than the aluminum from Ambutech, and it is flimsy. This one bends significantly when you use it, and not only that, the grip is much shorter than standard cane grips, as well as the elastic is much shorter than standard cane elastics, so it makes it a lot harder to put it away because you can't actually stretch it over the end. You almost, oh, I just did it. But it takes a lot more effort because the elastic is so short to actually get it over the tip of the cane. In addition to that, on the inside, there's just a knot holding the elastic together. And that creates a whole host of problems trying to get the cane tip back in. It doesn't have anything that holds the elastic if you want to switch the tips out. And I have fought with this cane for 10, 15 minutes, sometimes more, just trying to get the tip swapped out because this knot prevents the tip from going back in, but if you try and take the cane tip out, there's nothing preventing the elastic from going all the way up the cane. So it's not my favorite. It does not give good translation when you're on the ground, bends a lot when you contact obstacles, and it doesn't matter what kind of tip you have on it. It's just overall not a great cane. And the fact that it costs more than Ambutex aluminum cane really doesn't give this cane a lot of positive points in my book. I would pay $4 less and get a much higher quality aluminum cane from Ambutech than buy this one off of Amazon. There are a lot of different canes because there are a lot of different types of travelers. Depending on what you're looking for, one cane may really stand out over another. And every cane on this list has a lot of pros and cons. If you're looking for something and you're budget conscious, the Ambutech aluminum cane is going to be your best option. The worst option is going to be the no jab cane. If you're rating something on sturdiness, the best one is probably going to be the rigid or the fiberglass. Your worst options are going to be the telescoping cane at number one, the slimline at number two, and the Amazon aluminum at number three. If you're looking for the most tactile feedback, I would say fiberglass or rigid. If you want to know what I thought had the least tactile feedback, it was absolutely the telescoping. I would say the most compact cane is probably the slimline, although you could probably argue for the telescoping as well, and the least compact is the rigid cane. The best for contacting obstacles, in my opinion, is the no jab because of its incredibly unique design. And the worst for obstacles was absolutely telescoping because half the time I contacted something and the cane would collapse on me. If you're looking for something light, the lightest is going to be the slimline and the heaviest is going to be the aluminum. So depending on which of those are most important to you, it's going to probably tell you which cane is going to best suit your needs for what you're using it for. I'm curious to know what you use as your daily driver as a white cane. Are you just getting into white canes? Have you been using white canes for a long time? What's your favorite? Do you have different opinions from me? But the more opinions we get down below, the better it's going to help people decide what's going to work best for them. Before we finish off, I have two brief announcements. The first is an apology for being away so long. I was very, very sick. I couldn't speak. I was coughing a lot. I really had no energy. I couldn't sit down and film. So I'm glad to be back. I'm finally on the mend and getting better. Thank you for being patient with me while I was gone. I appreciate that. Second is I'm going to be doing a free to attend one hour seminar through the National Connecting the Dots CNIB conference on December 6th. If you would like to attend, there is going to be a link down below where you can sign up. You do have to sign up to attend. I'm going to be talking about how to make music accessible, how to adapt music for people who are blind and low vision, and some different options that really work to make classroom spaces universally accessible no matter what your disability is. So if that interests you, that link will be down below. You can sign up there. But that's all I have to say for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.